Good evening and welcome to this New Year episode of Talk Pixar. I'm Neville Choi. Tonight we look at two sectors which help generate revenue and who are also responsible for the skills their practitioners possess. We begin with the education sector, some challenges and achievements it saw this year. The Simbu province will house a new tertiary institution which will open many pathways for the future of this country. Called the Simbu Polytechnic Institute, this education institute is expected to house some of Papua New Guinea's future tradesmen and women. Our journalist Fabian Hakalitz was in Simbu and brings us this story. This is the Rima in the Gumine district of Simbu province. It can either be accessed through mode of land or air transport. With air transport via helicopter, you will have to pass through this mountainous rugged terrains. This is an aerial view of the Rima where the Simbu Polytechnic Institute will be built. Our arrival is met with the colorful traditional sing sing attended by close to a thousand people who wanted to catch a glimpse of the Prime Minister and the delegation from Port Mosby for the groundbreaking ceremony. Provincial Governor Noah Cole, while welcoming the Prime Minister and the delegation, also thanked the national government for choosing Simbu. Now this is a polytech, you know mistake. I'm coming to bless, blam, blam, bless our way. Lani mangi blam, blam, go and roll the school. Because this is our case economy. Without big blood, thank you. We will like a more institution will come later. Gumini MP Nick Kuman thanked the Simbu Governor for choosing Dirima as the location of this institution. He said this project costing around 150 million kina is anticipated to create many spinner benefits providing education for all Papua New Guineans. You saw also by changing lightly. On beginning of Papua New Guinea by coming here. More than 1,000 students by stumbling here low. Templar Moon no one one year. But I got more than 50 students, uh, 50 teaching staff by Stabler here, one one year. So I picked this Stabler school, all teachers or lecturers by Stabler here. All my staff is always by Stabler here. And everybody that associate one time, there's a polytech by Stabler here. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill said that education is the government's key policy, providing pathways to strengthen the country's workforce and that the national government will continue to invest in education as its first priority. Because future of the country, you mean? Even no stop the gold, the copper, the oil, the ground, or something, future of the country, you mean, stop the beginning here. They are our future. Now, only no mistake that comes up, whatever you mean. The national government serious this in education the Prime Minister says is reflected in the 3 billion kina national government budget. This is the highest slice of the budget for the education sector. The Prime Minister said that more polytechnic institutions will be built to solve the limited space problem for school leavers in the country. I'm educating 300,000 young people in the country. No one, one year, no one black grade. Close to two million blocks of beginning in Stablo School, two million. And big population. Blo country blow you must got serious attention 
That is why this uh, political, you mean by Belim Loyelo uh, Dreamer, I mean important. With this new project, it has brought change and is anticipated to create more spin off benefits for the locals and also the provincial government. And they have thanked the national government for realizing the need for an educated society. Uh, particularly the service delivery. So people are public servants been disturbed because uh, work underneath the administrator or make sure the government policy and make straight. So but this last time we've letting you some uh, money or money something or government you come to the province, the work service delivery and we go straight now. Thank you, Lord Leaders for the country. As well come now give good la service laus line, we blow laus line, we blow proud that they are giving Giving the people service over Laos line. Maybe not looking like something over Laos line, but maybe now maybe I'm also some like in remote area where this lab polytechnic come up the grounds for me. Now, according to the Polytechnic and TVET Impact Project Coordinator Wilson Garu, the simple Polytechnic Institute has been given specific attention by the national government through the National Executive Council's decision. It will provide the much needed education opening the many opportunities for school leavers limited by the current establishments. But so far, um, we have used in excess of more than uh, 10 million kina. We have some funding still remaining uh, that we will be going doing, doing other infrastructure development. Uh, like, for example, uh, we will be taking in water, uh, we will be taking in power as well, and doing all the other infrastructure development. And so we are grateful, grateful for the uh, national government of Papua New Guinea, which has provided us in excess of uh, almost uh, more than uh, close to close to 10 million kina for the project itself, uh, which of which uh, we we have some in in a trust account that will uh, shortly be used for infrastructure development as soon as all the tendering and other processes are completed. The Polytechnic and TVET Impact Project is expanding and Simbu, Anger and East New Britain have been identified as homes to three more polytechnic institutions in higher learning. These are additions to the Lay Polytechnic Institute in Morabe province. I am pretty sure that the Polytechnic in Gumini will be one of the uh, one that we will be looking for as a model school. Uh, in fact, it will overtake Lay, I believe, uh, with the support of the government. And uh, the way we are looking at it now is that it will be a little bit more significant. Uh, but it will be a learning, higher learning institution that will be offering um, diploma and advanced diploma programs. Uh, that particular institution will be preparing uh, students, uh, both in the Simbu province and the whole of Papua New Guinea, to prepare them for university studies at the University of Technology and other soft, web, soft programs that will also prepare them to enter University of Papua New Guinea, Divine Word, and um, other universities as well. So what we are at present doing also is to consult the university's consent, the industry consent, to develop curriculum according to uh, the requirements that they will want to, so that there is a pathway between the polytechnic and the universities uh, when they graduate. And so it's opening up a lot of opportunities for our young men and women.
You're watching Talk Pixar. We now look at some of the development challenges faced by communities in the heartlands of Rigo District in Central Province. Dakeva Komana Village, in particular, is among a group of villages in inland Rigo which have seen little to no development due to its isolation and poor road conditions. Because of its mountainous and rocky terrain, villages go through a daily struggle accessing basic services like water, health and education. Lengthy journeys are made on foot to seek medical help at the nearest aid post some 20 kilometers away. That's equivalent to a day's walk. Many lives have been lost in these areas to snake bite and infant and maternal mortality rates. These roads you are about to see have also been the cause of many casualties and accidents for the villagers when trying to access the area with vehicles. MTV's cameraman Kiviso Mobi and reporter Vanessa Knight visited the area to see the conditions of the roads and meet with the people there. Located just 100 kilometers away from Port Moresby, the struggle for basic services like health, education and water is significant for the people of Dakeva Komana village. With its mountainous and rocky terrain, the village is accessible only by a well-conditioned four-wheel drive vehicle and takes up to seven hours to reach on a good day. There are no health services in the village and the main source of water is from creeks, which are drying up due to the continuing effects of the El Nino drought. If a person falls ill or needs to make a trip into the city, they make the 20-kilometer journey by foot to the nearest health center in Matonato, which is also the last PMV stop, as that is where the better maintained road ends. As seen in most remote villages, there is a momentous brain drain effect in the community with its population of about 1,000. Skilled professionals and students inevitably move to settle in urban areas to seek employment or educational opportunities. Visits back home may become rare depending on availability of transport and the condition of the rigorous roads. The village recently struggled enough to develop its local school, Dakeva Komana Primary School, to attain its primary top-up status, a proud moment for the remote village. If you want to help, please, I need, really, really need your help. And we need to help together, help uh, the, these people, our students in the school as well as the community, so that they can realize their dreams and to future their studies. We have potentials in the schools. The students here have great potentials, and the human resource needs to be upgraded in this, in this uh, area. There, we have been marginalized from uh, services, government services, but little uh, access to road uh, conditions or transport systems that is uh, blocking us from going to towns or doing other developments. So it is uh, uh, quite a hardships that we are, we are facing now. And to continue the school, we are, we are going to still struggle and somebody or the community or the support from the outside has to come so that we can we can continue to run the school smoothly and operationally. I also thank the community for their support, the teachers who come here, they're very friendly, the supportive community. As a result we can you can see also some of the developments that we are doing in the in the school. And as a result we have we have now successfully uh, held our graduation this year. And that is a successful and very historical in this school. 
But despite the harsh living conditions, the villagers who remain work and live in the only way of life they know. They long for an aid post, easy water accessibility and better living conditions to encourage teachers to stay and teach their children. They believe the only way to achieve such is if the roads leading into their village is fixed by appropriate authorities. People die of uh, small ailments, you know, like malaria. They get complicated, but you know, they could be they're treatable if the malaria is starting to take hold on the body. You can give them the tablets, you know, it's gone. But here, because they can't uh, go to uh, the, prim uh, the, the next clinic, which is about a day's walk from here, they just uh, hope that for the best, you know. And one major thing is that people don't uh, probably are not aware of it is the Papuan black snakes. There's a lot of deaths from Papuan black snakes. And Papuan black snakes, within 20 minutes, I think, from what I have seen uh, victims, they started, uh, the blood is started, you know, affected, the breathing system is affected. So when uh, someone is, say, bitten in the bush making guidance, if he's by himself or if he's calling out and uh, by the time the message gets through to the others that he's been uh, bitten by a snake, they have to go and carry that person, make, uh, you know, the stretch out of sticks, stretches, and then carry him from here to the clinic. Or if the woman is uh, uh, having birth difficulties, uh, next the nearest clinic is that just at the same place. So they have to walk, carry them all the way, some, some of them die. So, um, hopefully that's something that, uh, you know, would be put nearby here, built nearby. You know, people here, I think the basic things that they want are health, education, road. This has resulted in a lot of deaths from treatable illnesses and emergency medical cases. And this new year, 2017, comes with a new dimension of life. As the Catholic Church begins the new year with the solemnity of the Mary, Mother of God, for the autonomous region of Bougainville, this year is a year of reflection. Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Bougainville, Bernard Unabali, says that it's a new beginning, which is part of the new pastoral plan, a direction with God. Our journalist, Fabian Hakalitz, takes a look at what has united the people of Bougainville. He brings us this story of faith. The recent visit of the International Pilgrim Statue of Our Lady of Fatima to the autonomous region of Bougainville marks a new journey for the people of Bougainville. With 98% of the total Catholic population, Bougainville went through bloodshed of wreaking war and destruction and faith is what that has always united the people even before during the civil war and after or even one could say that faith has saved the islanders from this devastating island war. Life after the civil war was about peace and reconciliation, saying sorry to each other and it took years with more reconciliations still coming and with bougainville walking the journey towards referendum deciding to be separate from mainland papua new guinea and running its own affairs with its autonomous bougainville government the journey of faith is also very important
The International Pilgrim Statue of Our Lady of Fatima arrived in the autonomous region of Bougainville on October 1 last year 2016 during the month of the Holy Rosary, a special devotion to the Lord's Holy Mother. Close to a thousand Catholic faithfuls and other mainline churches united in spirit and welcomed the pilgrims in Boca. Women leader Marietta Rumina described the crowd as unification for all churches. All the brother churches, only one bell. Now only got this black hammer And along all one name kind all, all heavy only got inside long, long, long light, long, long, long black time stare. The International Pilgrim Statue of Our Lady of Fatima began its pilgrimage in Boca, welcomed in the Bougainville House of Representatives and the Office of the President of the Autonomous Bougainville Government. Vice President of the Autonomous Bougainville Government, Patrick Nisera says that the visit brought renewed hope and strength to political leadership on the island. So for us, it means a lot. It is, it's a very significant event. And we are very happy that uh, Our Lady of Padema has, uh, in the international pilgrimage, they have landed in Bougainville. So we believe that with her landing in Bougainville and with her message of peace, being the queen of peace, we believe that it will strengthen peace in the hearts of Bougainville and in the hearts of the population here. So because, you know, it, it strengthens especially the Catholic faith on Bougainville. And I believe that uh, it's not only the Catholic faith on Bougainville, but other denominations have taken part, have supported uh, the international pilgrimage of Our Lady of Padima on Bougainville. So uh, I think for us, as we move, uh, that Our Lady has visited Parliament. <laughs> After the whole Eucharistic celebration, it continued to the Boca Hospital, the Bougainville Public Service Administration, the cell block of the Boca Police Station, and also the Bell EC Park in Boca Town. <laughs> The sacred image continued its journey throughout the autonomous region of Bougainville, working miraculous among believers and non-believers. People prayed, sang and meditated as they walked the pilgrimage. We do believe in Christ, the soul in belief to Master of Mama Brongen. We do not believe in Mama Maria, the soul in Brongen. Because M, the soul that he got body, long run, no got sin, because of special Mary, long walk, long God yet. And we give him body, long Jesus. And therefore, long this blood body, long end yet. You blood too, such you know, believe long end. 
But the little of Christ beginning long end. You blood therefore and picking it long mama to was have your body long end. Bishop Bernard announced that the shrine named Fatima will be built to mark the visit of the International Pilgrim Statue of Our Lady of Fatima to the autonomous region of Bougainville. Custodian of the sacred image, Brother Paul Foley told Tuk Pixar, this came at the right time when Bougainville is chattering its way forward for its political status. Not only that, but the unification of all churches in Bougainville who came to pray and venerate together. So we came here with Mother and I know that she came at a very important time in the history of Bougainville. It's a time of reconciliation. It's a time of rebuilding. It's a time of moving forward to the future with Mother's help. I do believe that Bougainville has a very great future, that God has merciful plans for Bougainville and its people, and those plans will be realized, and Bougainville will be a great country, provided Bougainville works with God. So as long as Bougainville is close to God and rebuilds with God, things will work out very well. And I know that our Lady of Fatima, she's the Queen of Peace. She came to Fatima to say that her Immaculate Heart would triumph and peace would come to the world. There is a message of hope for all Bougainvilleans. And I believe that Bougainville has tremendous resources. And if the Bougainvillean people unite together and use their resources well, they, they, the nation will, be very, uh, will advance and progress very rapidly. But a point I really want to make here is that Without everything being built or laid on a strong, spiritual, God-fearing, God-loving foundation, all the things we human beings will do are for naught. It will end up in confusion, frustration, wastage, and so forth. There were many miracles that happened during the visit of the sacred image, which are counted for by the faithfuls and also the Bougainville Catholic Diocese. I, have, I talked, oh, it might have been a week ago, to a mother who had a brain tumor. And she couldn't see because the tumor was destroying her optical nerves. She is now completely cured. She can see again, and very well. I mean, there are, have been some very remarkable physical cures and these kind of miracles. But for me, even more touching and even more impressive is the spiritual miracles taking place. Is marriages being put together in order. I've witnessed and I've heard in a number of places that people are putting their married life in order. People who haven't been married and living together are now getting married. They're taking on their, they're accepting the sacrament of marriage, which is a great blessing from God, will help them in their lives. Um, people coming back to the church, people who've strayed away from God returning, people wanting to go to confession who haven't confessed for many years. The International Pilgrim Statue of Our Lady of Fatima was farewelled at the Buka Airport at the end of October after completing its pilgrim throughout the autonomous region of Bougainville.